Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back in to the Stop and Listen podcast where no shits are given and it's always beer 30. You know, it never amazes me. Had a guy come into our office today and you can tell I'm not a physically fit person, but I was back in the day. Don't get me wrong. But anyway, doesn't matter now. I'm fat now. So I hadn't seen this guy in a long time and it never <laughs> amazes me how people talk to other people but first thing the guy said to me wasn't hey how you doing i went in there because i hadn't seen the guy in a while and i was excited to see him and the older guy he said oh boy you can tell they sure been feeding you i was like golly i'm offended said it's not because i've been eating it's the beer anyway had another guy do the same thing and look if you're gonna make fun of somebody or pick on somebody make sure um, all your bases are covered had a guy, hadn't seen him in probably two years. Went by his shop, and uh, first thing out of his mouth, he said, boy, you get about as wide as you are tall. And I'm thinking, I didn't say anything. I just kind of laughed. Like, yeah, you know, I'm just getting older. And this guy has no teeth in his head. Maybe one. M- maybe one, because I've seen him eat food. But it's just, I don't understand people. Like, how in the world you have no teeth in your head? Like, all I have to do is, like, look, I can lose this if I want to. Just quit drinking beer. Said, you, on the other hand, need $20,000 worth of dental work. I mean, God almighty. I just, you know, people are people are nuts. But uh, people do it all the time. It doesn't matter, you know, whether it be, you know, people making fun of people's houses and stuff. Like, it never amazed me how you'll sit there and be talking to someone about something, not knowing if maybe... That what you're talking about making fun of they do or they have like people making fun of like mobile homes or something person you may be talking to lives in a mobile home you know i mean just just yeah people are so dumb like like what the hell's going through people's mind like just be careful what you're saying like don't be stupid because first off a lot of times people have no room to talk about something they're pointing out your obvious flaw or not flaw but something easy to pick at but then you turn around it's like jesus man like if we want to start talking shit like you are a book of things i could talk about Anyway, so this gets me thinking that just rambling and ranting and stuff, but y'all know I like to tell stories if y'all been watching. So here we are, episode seven, Shitty Friends. So had a good friend of mine used to uh, help us drive. We'll call him Jim. Just to protect him from other people, his identity. As far as if he's watching this and he gets mad. I don't care. Um, I'm just calling out facts. If you don't like it, you should do things differently. That's all I know. So anyway, had a buddy. He drove a, drove a truck for us uh, where I work at. He was driving a truck. Um, he needed a little help at one point financially. He had started his own business and, you know, didn't have a lot of work at first, which is understandable. You know, things happen. You got to build up your business. So he uh, he worked with us, got to know him. That's kind of how we become friends. By him working with us. And anyway, his business grew. He started working less and less with us. And then basically he became become full-time doing his own thing. That's cool, man. I was happy to see it because nowadays to start a business and succeed, golly, man. Like, it's just you see business after business fail. And I feel sorry for people because, like, the capital you have to have to start something is insane nowadays. Um, anyway, so he... uh hadn't he hadn't worked with us probably about a year or six months on it had been a while and i called him up and we needed some help on a job uh over near the coast uh for the uh the united states department of agriculture it's kind of a high profile job we're trying to do a good job for him make everything look good and stuff trying to knock it out and get it done quick so i called this guy in for backup like hey man like we need uh we got a spare truck sitting like can you haul for us he said uh well, he said, to be honest with you, man, my truck's been broke down. I was like, oh, so you can't. He's like, well, no, I need to get it handled. It's, you know, I'm you know, losing a lot of money. He said, I've been doing kind of oddball stuff for a while. And I was like, well, what, you know, what's wrong with it? We have a, a mechanic at our shop that, that works for us. And he said, uh, I said, you know, depending on what it is, I said, just bring it by the shop, man. I'll take care of it. Like, look, we'll do a favor. You go down there and help haul. You come up here. We'll get this mechanic. I'll be I'll be fifty dollars cheaper than anybody else in town. It, Thirty to fifty dollars cheaper, and we were so I guaranteed that price to him. Is an hourly rate 
plus material. So he was fine with it. So he goes down there, starts working. I'm back in town where our mechanic's at. And he, uh, he, he serviced the truck for the guy, whatever. And of course that he brought his own filter. So no material, just a little bit of labor, about an hour's worth of time. Service that vehicle, grease it, things like that. Change the oil. So he, uh, he said, I need you to look at some, and that was, that was the easy thing of the product. He had other things that needed to be fixed. They're more major. So we started addressing things. And one of them was if y'all not trying to get off on vehicles and bore y'all and y'all leave the channel here, but he, uh, his PTO, which is what raises the beds on those dump trucks. It had a leak and had problems. So we're looking at it and remind you, this truck is a 19, it's either 87 or 89. I think it's 89. And, uh, obviously the parts are for the vehicle aren't obsolete necessarily. Cause it was a name brand truck. You know, it was a, it's a body they've used for years, still use it currently. But anyway, but the aftermarket parts, such as the pump, no good. I told him, I said, look, man, I said, we got two options. I said, we can try to fix it, but I can't guarantee it because I can't get parts for this thing. Or, and, you know, you pay me and it doesn't work, I still have to get the new part. Or we just don't try to fix it and let's just get you a new part. It's up to you. It does. I'm not trying to make money off of you. I said, we're just, what do we need to get this thing fixed? I'll let you decide. It's your money. He said, uh. He said, well, maybe just try and fix the time. I said, how long? He said, how long do you think it'll take to try to fix it? I said, well, it's probably hard to get to the bolts on it, whatever. I said, probably a couple hours. So we were looking at a couple hundred bucks. And, you know, he was he was fine with that. So we tried it, put it back, and I thought I had good news for him. I was like, hey, man, I think it actually worked. He's like, well, that's cool. You know, hell yeah. You know, man, it went 10 minutes later. I think I called him back. I said, sorry, man, we noticed it's dripping, it's leaking again. He said, well, I guess, you know, let's look at a new one. So I would already called and got a price. Just in case this fell through, I want to make sure I had a part readily available. So um, I told him, I was like, look, it's, you know, $2,800 for the part. What it cost me, I'm going to charge you. I'm not marking it up. You can see the receipts when we're done. Whatever you want to do, doesn't matter to me. You know, like, we're friends. I ain't trying to screw you. Get the part. And mind you, I'm telling him step by step every time we spend money on this thing. Didn't want him to be surprised. He'd been screwed out of money by a lot of He'd been screwed out of over ten grand already working on this truck. Maybe closer to 50. I don't know. It was a lot of money. And it's still broke, mind you. So we put that on. Of course, the part that that hooks up to was no good. But with no way to test it because the other part was leaking. There was just no way to test it. It was just the – it was just – it was just a weird situation. He understood, and I said, look, man, can't get parts for this other thing either. They're saying this company's not even in business anymore. They got bought out. They don't even fool with those parts anymore. He said, well, I guess get a price on that. Call, got a price. I said, this is what it is. He said, well, go ahead. I don't really have a choice. So we did it. So fixed that, got that fixed. He knew about all the pricing on it. Oh, man, it's raining outside. God, we've been having rain. That rain has been hammering us like crazy. But anyway, he... uh we did some other things on the truck or whatever, and got into some more big ticket things. And we told him, "It's like, look, we're at the point now where I know this is probably getting more expensive than you're kind of thinking. Do you want to? Um, we can we can put the stuff back the way it is. It's actually leaking less than it was when we cleaned the parts, put it back. I said, you're gonna kind of be in the same boat, but it is better than it was." If you don't want to spend all this money, he's like, no. He said, I'm, I'm tired of dealing with this. I want everything fixed, front to back. So we went through this truck with a fine-tooth comb. Every time we would go to fix something, we called and told him. I said, look, we'd send pictures. Like, we, you know, we weren't hoodooing this guy. He's a friend of mine. Well, got all this done. Finished the truck. I said, hey, man, done with your truck. Um, I said, I know you had some issues with the dump bed, you know, a bunch of holes in it and stuff like that, you know, where it was leaking. Like, he'd haul gravel and it'd fall out on the road. And of course, you know, bust people's windshield. You know, you don't want that. So, um, I said, do you want us to address it? Because he had just paid a welder to do work on that thing, and I think he spent $750, and I seen the work the welder did. And it looked, 
it looked like shit, man. Like I, how he paid that guy and left there is beyond me. Um, he's he's a better man than me. So, but it wasn't fixed. That's the thing. The work was it. It made he even said, "Man, my bed's worse than it was." I said, "Well, if you want to," I said, "I won't charge you as much as we were doing on the mechanic work." I said, "I'll give you a different rate since it's uh, welding work. It'll be a little bit cheaper, about twenty five dollars an hour cheaper." Which, mind you, is still cheaper than the industry standard where we're at. Because, again, it's a friend of mine. It's what's in my head the whole time. I'm thinking, friend, treat him right. So, we get it fixed. And he knows we've been working on this truck for two solid weeks. I mean, oh, pretty much 10-hour days. Had a lot of time in this truck. But this truck was right when we were done with it. I didn't want him coming back to me saying, hey, man, this is not working. I said, hell no, I've been through that with shops before. We want it fixed. We, I want to fix it right. I mean, Jesus Christ, how the guy makes money, you know? So he gets back. I didn't send him a bill at first. Um, and mind you, we were, we were trading off his driving time. We agreed on an hourly rate. I was going to pay him or, or the company was going to pay him for driving our truck and deduct that from what he owed us. Plus, he wanted to use, I think, his credit card to kind of pay for some of the this co- our company does demolition, so we go to landfills. Of course, you got to pay for the material. We have accounts at these places, but he says, "Is there is it all right if I pay for this with my credit card and put that toward my uh, truck bill?" And I said, "I don't see a problem with that." I said, "But you know, you're going to pay interest." And he's like, "I'm not worried about that. At least I don't have to pay all this up front." I said, no, "I understand." So anyway, he come back to town, got his truck. He had been using it for probably. Six months. I hadn't sent them the bill yet. Just been busy. Uh, I, I had a, you know, we had a fair amount of, amount of money out of pocket on this thing, but wasn't going to break us. Dang. That's a bad storm out there. Anyway, so that's why I like this mic. This thing kind of dampens all that noise out. But anyway, so he uh, went like six months. Maybe uh, it might have been nine months. I, he went a long time without ever getting a bill. Finally, we uh we got all the receipts put together. No markup on this stuff. Nothing. I mean, at cost, what we paid. Only thing we charged them for was labor. And I even cut them, we even cut them a deal. Like if we drove somewhere to go get the part, we didn't charge him the hundred dollars an hour to go get the part. Now, mind you, it's the going rate where we're at for a truck mechanic for a big truck mechanic is like one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars an hour, especially at a dealer. Reason I we were going to charge a little bit more, but I think we ended up with like a hundred, hundred ten dollars an hour. Sending the bill, nothing. Didn't hear from the guy, and I was like, "Well, Dave, I ain't worried about this cat." You know, I know. Him. So, they office told me, "Hey, uh, Jim hadn't paid his bill. You mind? Uh, you want to follow up with him?" So, just one of the girls in the office, she sent him a message and asked, "Like, hey, uh, email? You know, perfect. You know, what, I don't mean a text. Like, send him an email and you know, ask him about it." He said, uh, "He said, well, he said, I really want to talk to the owner of our company. He said, it's a, it's a lot higher than I thought. The bill was twelve grand. I think it was like $12,000, which I know for some of y'all listening that do like regular automotive work and go get to get your car on, car worked on, it's a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> I know that sounds, you could buy a car for what it costs to fix this truck. But mind you, these trucks are $300,000 almost brand new now. So for him, you know, the truck was paid for, whatever. So, he, uh, thing was, he never got around to calling the owner, talking with him. Finally, a few months went by, and this is almost going on a year at this point, close to a year. A lot of back and forth. Finally, our owner said, look, we're going to, I think we had close to 100 hours in this thing. I'm trying to show you guys some thighs. Uh, had about 100 hours in this thing, and the guy, went, he went, Jim wasn't wanting to pay. He didn't agree with it, which I found funny because he knew about everything we did up for it. It wasn't like he said, fix it. I sent a bill later. Like I told him, like, okay, hey, I'm going to fix it, but this is what it's going to cost for this part. It was like almost, it was like $7,000, I think, in, just in parts. So it was, it, was a, it was a lot. Anyway, so he uh, finally, we did, we dropped the bill to like $8,500. So we cut like four grand off this thing. Oh, basically, we, we were we charged him. Uh, how do we do it? We cut our labor down. I don't remember now. 
trying to think. We we cut our labor not in half, but we brought it way down. So thousands of dollars he saved. Anyway, he uh, he still wasn't wanting to pay. Finally, since we were friends, I finally said, I told him, I said, fuck it. I said, give me the invoice. I said, where it's broke down, where y'all credited everything. I said, I'm just going to call him. So if he don't like it, it is what it is. I said, we got to get this straightened out. I said, I'm just, I'm, 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 this is making me look bad. You know what I mean? Because I, I made, I told our company, like, hey, this guy, he's good for it, whatever. And then, now he's not wanting to pay the bill. So it's making me look bad. And uh, and he's a friend, so I mean, out of all that, you know, I just you know, it's kind of crappy for a friend to do that. Anyway, finally, I I called him. I said, "Hey, man, it just uh, wasn't rude, but I was just like to the point at this point because they had contacted him maybe ten times about this in, unpaid invoice." So he said, uh, "He's like he got real kind of quiet, and because he knew it was kind of awkward because we were friends, he hadn't talked to me about this at all yet." And he said, hey, yeah, he said, man, I just, I was wondering about a couple of things I didn't know. I said, what are they? Just like cut them off. What are they? And he said, well, this, I said, right there, like line item five. He's like, yeah, I see that. But what about the other part? I said, it's on the same line item. I said, for your hauling time where we credited you and for where you use your car to pay for some of that stuff. To can't, I said, it's all line item five. I didn't make line item five the hauling and line item six the money. I said, it might have been a little more simpler to understand it that way. But in the end, you can see, he's like. Oh, okay. I, he said. I said. So when when he gets paid, is that all your questions? Because at this point, I was aggravated with him. Not not that I didn't want to be his friend anymore, but I, it put a sore spot between us. So uh, he come by later that day, cut a check, got us paid. You know, check cleared. wasn't like a bounce or anything. So I didn't talk to him for a while. I was still a little aggravated about it, but I didn't want to end a friendship over. But he. Uh, I found out through one of our coworkers. He said I was telling them I was like, "Yeah," he said Jim finally paid on that truck, and they said, "He said, you know, he said he probably called me two months ago and asked me how much time I had in that truck." I said, "He did what? Yeah, he. It's like he thought we were trying to duke duke him on the bill, like trying to overcharge him. And of course, the guy that he called, he's loyal to our company. He's like, nah, man. He said like." The numbers they gave you are the numbers I turned in on work time. He said, those are legitimate hours, you know, basically, basically is what it, you know, a little bit of a language barrier between the two, but that was the general thing was, yeah, that's, that's right. And that's got nothing to do with me. You need to speak with the owner and Alex. I ain't talked to the guy since. That's how, that's, to me, I might be wrong. You guys might be thinking, man, it's a little hard, but. When you got somebody that you've been there for, and then you do something, and then they turn around and try to act like you screwed them and overcharged them, when you know for a fact you call them, you try to keep them, because I knew it was going to be expensive. I don't want to charge my friend that much money. I said, but in the end, parts are parts. I can't control the market. So he, uh, I had talked with him since. I hadn't seen him. I'd see him going down the road occasionally, because um, again, I drive a truck. That was a day trade. And I'll pass them sometimes, you know, we do local hauling. And I don't wave or anything. I hadn't, like, met them at a traffic light. But I've just seen them off in the distance. Hadn't spoke with them. And then I seen them the other day. We were uh, getting ready to head to the lake or something like that. It was a Saturday morning or Sunday. Oh, hell, I don't remember now. Anyway, but I seen them. And uh, I waved. He waved to me, but he didn't say nothing. And, look, I don't have hard feelings toward anybody. But at the same time, I, it's hard to be friends with people that can that can do that. And I hate to make everything about money because, once again, one of my stories, here it is, bowling down the money. But I hate to say it. It just gets to a point where it's, will I ever get past it and probably talk with him again? Possibly. I mean, he's a good drinking buddy. Like, we, man, me and him we used to go to the lake all the time. I mean, we just, we're good friends. Heck, I bought him, like, an AR-15 for Christmas one time. Which I know, if y'all are liberal, God, don't get started on that bullshit assault rifle stuff. I don't want to hear that. So, he, uh, so I bought him that or whatever. So, he, uh, so we're good friends. So, hopefully we'll work it out. Um, so when I started out saying shitty friends, yeah, I think that was a shitty thing to do. I think as far as a friend go, you just don't do that to friends. Um, and then try to act like they did you wrong, because that wasn't the case. So, 
anyway, another little story for you guys. Uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. I enjoy it. Like my new setup. I'll show you guys when I'm done with it. We uh, just to kind of end this video. We got a uh, like sound dampener and uh, what do you call that? Light eliminating curtains or uh, blackout curtains. There you go. And uh, we're gonna try to get this wall back here painted. Get some stuff put on there. Some lights, whatever. Get a little better lighting in here. Like I said, stepped into the microphone. Uh, I enjoy doing this. Kind of fun. Like I said, I want you guys to start chiming in the comments. Call me out if you don't like what I'm saying. If you like what I'm saying, comment, add stuff, put in the comments you want me to talk about. Hey, whatever it is. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. And again, this is Stop and Listen, and I'm your host, Alex. Thanks for watching.